Reality is changing, especially in broadcasts, stage shows and concerts. And that's because there's a new technology that can now blend our physical and virtual worlds together. It's called XR, which stands for Extended Reality, and I've come to Disguise, a company pioneering this groundbreaking tech, to find out more. So, Tom, what is XR? XR is all about mixed reality, which is blending um, and the real and virtual worlds that we can have in um, amongst us, um, extending all the way out to the background and beyond. What do you guys actually do? You're, you're creating the virtual worlds? So Disguise make a software product that's used to pre-visualise and plan and map content across a physical space like the one you see behind me. We then make hardware products that deliver all of that content into the physical space very, very quickly with very low latency. So how do you go about creating these virtual worlds? So these virtual worlds are running in the same sort of graphics engines that run computer games. Uh, this particular one is running in Unreal Engine made by Epic Games. It's all happening in real time, so as the camera moves, uh, the content changes perspective and that needs an immense amount of computing power happening simultaneously. This tech helps those performing live to be fully immersed and have the ability to see and interact with virtual surroundings. And Chief Technology Officer Ed Plowman is putting me on a smart stage in the Science Museum. So, Ed, I'm seeing a big LED screen, cameras, lights. Talk me through what's going on here. So, what we have here is our typical virtual production environment. We have an LED wall and floor, which we're using to project content. That back bit looks quite normal, but the floor... That looks very skewed to my eyes. The perspective of the image that's being placed on the LED wall and floor at the moment is uh, based on the view of the camera, not our point of view. So it does look a little bit weird to us, but it looks absolutely correct on the feed going out to the viewers at home. When the cameras move, sensors detect markers on the ceiling and floor, which allows software to track them, so the viewer never gets a distorted image. The LED walls and floor allow people to both react to the virtual environment and interact with any virtual objects that may appear, like an F1 car, for example. To us, this looks very, very strange. Yes. Um, but to the, uh, the viewers at home, they can see it's uh, a Formula One car. But as you can see, it's not visually correct because we're standing on top yes. of it. But if we add the augmented reality version of it, ah. now, we're, um, now we're standing behind the car itself. The augmented F1 car is dropped into the virtual environment using the company's bespoke software. So we can see on the floor, we can see an image that we can point at different uh, sections of the car and we can do all that without having to look at a reference monitor or anything else. What the viewers at home see is us interacting with uh, something as if it was in front of us. So that means I can like point to the tyre and I'm yep. looking at the tyre on the floor but that also correlates quite perfectly to the image that I'm looking at on screen. Absolutely. And as you can see, the whole thing flows and moves correctly according to where the camera is being viewed from, just as it would do if this was physically in front of us on a real set. Wow. With XR, you only need a small studio space because AR content layers can be added beyond the physical stage, creating infinitely bigger virtual environments. On the screen, the set looks a lot bigger than what it feels here. We're doing what we call set extension, which is moving the virtual world out of the actual physical view that we can see. And if we drop the set extension now... Ah. There we go. You can see <laughs> what, what we're actually standing in. Um, and that kind of ruins the illusion of the Yeah, exactly. Well. Put it back, put it back. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Back in a big studio again. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not just static objects XR lets you interact with. Disguise have partnered with technical solutions company White Light to roll the tech out and create unique and dynamic experiences in the virtual world. White Light's technical solutions director, Andy Hook, is going to show me exactly how they do it. If we wanted to put the logo on the table, let's put the Gadget Show logo on this table. So that AR object is tracked, so I can move this table around, and as I move this table, the logo will stay stuck to the top of it, even though it's not really there. And it knows where to go because that's the little sensor. Exactly. That's the little tracker there. Now, do you want to see something really cool? Grab that torch, which isn't really a torch. So okay. no light comes out of that. We've just put some tracking beacons on the top of it, so we know where that light points. So if I turn the lights off in this space now, Ooh. your torch is actually lighting the virtual environment. So we might be looking around a gallery at night and you're explaining the environment to me, or we could be revealing content. 
Interacting with objects is one thing, but what about interacting with people? Let's go to Shanghai. Nice. There you go, Very in easy. Shanghai. And we've got some people on a Zoom call from your disguise office that we saw earlier. Ah, yes. Hi, Ed. Hi, Alex. Hi, Peter. So, um, Alexandra, I'm interested to know, what can you see right now? Hi, Georgie. Yes, so I can see everyone on the Zoom call, but I can also see you and Andy completely immersed in the studio space as well. So that's quite interesting. I mean, people are very familiar with this setup at the moment, you know. This scenario just sort of injects a little bit more life to it, doesn't it? We've got one more trick. So we can actually bring Tom back in as well into the studio, if you like, using teleportation. Teleportation, I like Teleportation's a thing. <laughs> yes, with literally a click of a button. Here he is. Uh, hi, Tom, can you hear me? Hi, right, Georgie. Heard you perfectly and I can see you as well. Wow, that's amazing. OK, so obviously, you know, we can see that he's on the uh, the screen at the back there, but if I actually look to the monitor, it's really realistic. It's like he's genuinely sharing this studio space with us. Yeah. So, Tom, whereabouts are you? You must be in some kind of, like, specialist setup. I'm standing here in front of a green screen. I have a camera, uh, I have a monitor so I can see what's happening, I have a light, and that's pretty much it. Could I have this in my home? This is my question for you. Why not? I could just stay at home on a green screen and then just beam me into the Gadget Show studio. Exactly. Super COVID safe. Or maybe we could just do that with Otis, cos just get rid of him, <laughs> get rid of him. There. I mean, who doesn't want to be able to do that? <laughs>